All right, here we go. This is the fourth uh, video for systems of equations. Um, this looks like it's going to be our final video. Um, sort of at the end of every section, we wind up having word problems that practice what we've been learning. Um, so here we're going to go ahead and do word problems that involve systems of equations. Uh, the best way to handle word problems is uh, to read the problem. Um, so let's go ahead and put up the first problem. So the first problem is this. You and a friend go to Bob's Garden Center, and you buy a total of 13 bushes and 4 trees, and get a bill for $487. Your friend buys a total of 6 bushes and 2 trees, and gets a bill for a, bill for a total of $232. So, the one thing Bob's Garden doesn't do is list the price per item, or even the price for, say, 13 bushes or 6 bushes, um, so the question is, how much did you pay for the bushes, and how much did you pay for the trees? So the way we're going to handle this is we're going to have to come up with a system of equations. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with some variables. Generally speaking, we use x and y. And so here's x, here's y. And what we're trying to figure out is the price of the bushes and the price of the trees. So why don't we let x be the price of bushes and y be the price prices the price of bushes and the price of trees. Well, let's go back and look at our receipts. We see that we have 13 bushes and 4 trees and wind up paying 487. The price of 13 bushes would be 13 times the price of one bush. And so we get 13 times the price of one bush is the total price that we paid for the bushes. And we bought four trees, so four times the price of trees is how much we spent on trees. And we spent a total of $487. And so we get this from receipt number one. From receipt 2, just looking back really quick, we get that 6 times the price of bushes plus 2 times the price of trees was a total of $232. At this point, we've got two equations, two unknowns, and we can go ahead and solve it. Remember, there's a lot of ways we can solve this. In general, our preferred method is elimination. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an, a letter to eliminate. And what seems to be the easiest is y. And the reason y seems to be the easiest is because if I multiply the second equation by negative 2, I'm going to get negative 4y, and the 4y and the negative 4y are going to cancel. So let's go ahead and do that. Multiply everything by negative 2. And then rewrite. We get negative 12x minus 4y equals negative 464. So we're going to combine the two lines. 13 take away 12 is 1. Well, look, we got x all by itself. And 464 from 487 is 23. And so the price of trees, right, this tells us the price... I'm sorry, not of trees, of bushes, is $23. And we're not done because we haven't figured out the price of trees, but all we have to do is plug this into one of our original equations, and we will get the price of trees. So let's plug it into the second one. 6x plus 2y equals 232. We just saw that x was 23. So we take 6 times 23 plus 2y equals 232, and that gives us 138 plus 2y equals 232. Subtract 138, 
And so we get 2y equals 94 divided by 2. And we get y equals 50, oh, not 57. Forty-seven, And so we just got x was 23, y was 47, and this was the price of bushes. And this was the price of trees. So that's one problem. Let's look at the next one. All right, so here's the next problem. It's a windy day, and there's a plane flying overhead. And on the trip out, it's flying with the wind, and it takes two hours to go 600 miles. Then it flies against the wind and takes three hours to go the same 600 miles. So the question is, how fast is the plane, and how fast is the wind? Now, we're asking how fast, and you should be thinking in your head that this is a rate question. Rate is amount over time. Right? Or, another way of thinking about this is amount equals rate times time. So we're going to go ahead and use this bottom one to help us. So looking back at the question, I see an amount, and I also see a time. And what we need are some variables to help us figure out what the rate is. So we're going to let W be the speed of the wind. And let P be the speed of the plane. So here, this is going to help us find our rate. So when we're flying uh, into the wind, the, the wind is working against us. And so the, the rate, the speed, is given by the speed of the plane minus the speed of the wind. When we fly with the wind, right, with the wind at our back, our speed is the speed of the plane plus the speed of the wind, right? It's helping us. And so we can come up with our equation, look it back, we'd say that the amount is the rate times the time. So into, right, 600 is the amount, that's the distance. And that equals, well, what did we say the speed was? P minus W times the time, which was three hours, with same 600 miles, and that was P plus W times 2. So let's go ahead and distribute. We get 600 equals 3P minus 3W, and 600 equals 2p plus 2w. Now we need to go ahead and eliminate. So let's multiply the bottom by 3 and the top by 2 to get our new equations. Our two new equations are 1200 equals 6p minus 6w and 1800 equals 6p plus 6w. And we can see that these two equations will eliminate nicely. Let's rewrite them. 1200 equals 6p minus 6w. And 1800 equals 6p plus 6w. And when we add these two equations, we get 12p equals 3000. So we have to divide both sides by 12. Now 12 goes into 32, leaving a 6. 12 goes into 65, 
and so P is 250. So the plane goes 250 miles per hour. Now let's look back at one of our other equations so we can figure out what W has to be. So let's look at 2P plus 2W equals 600. 2 times 250 plus 2W equals 600. That's 500. And so if I subtract 500 from both sides, I get 2W equals 100, or W equals 50. Now let's look back at the original question. This should make sense. So when I'm flying with the wind, I'm going 250, the speed of the plane, plus 50, the speed of the wind, miles per hour. That winds up being a total of 300 miles per hour, so it should take us two hours to go 600 miles. When I'm flying against the wind, I'm flying the 250 minus the 50, which means I'm flying 200 miles per hour, so it should take me three hours to go 600 miles. Let's go ahead and look at another question. Okay, so the last type of question we're going to do is what we like to call a sort of mixing question. The premise is that you have some amount of two things that have something in common, like uh, two types of acid solutions, uh, possibly two types of paint that have a certain amount of pigment in them, right? So you maybe have like a light blue paint and a dark blue paint, and you want to get some sort of medium blue paint at the end. Um, but in all of these, you're given um, sort of the percentages of the, solu the thing that's in the solution. So here we have 20% acid, and we have 50% acid, and what we're going to do is we're going to mix these two things together, and at the end what we want is we want to get 9 gallons of 30% acid. So in order to solve these questions, you need to set up some equations. You don't know how much there is, but we can safely say that we can come up with letters like X and Y, right, for the amount of 20% acid solution and the amount of 50% acid solution, right, and X and Y are going to be in gallons. We want some number of gallons of each to combine to make 9 gallons. And so the first thing that should stick out to you, equation 1, is that if you add X and Y, you need 9 gallons. Right? This, sh this should be entirely obvious. I want 9 gallons of 30% solution, so when I add X to Y, I need 9 gallons. So this is the first equation you're going to write. And the second equation, right, this is the actual mixing equation. We need to understand how to represent percents. Remember, 20%, 50%, and 30%. The way you can write percent is to take the percentage and divide it by 100, right? So if I have um, 20, uh, if I have X gallons of 20%, the amount of it that's acid is going to be given by multiplying the amount by the percent. And so if I take 20 divided by 100 and multiply it by X, this here is the amount of acid... in x gallons at 20%, right? That's what that represents, and you have to keep that in the back of your head in order to solve these questions. When you're given these percentages, if you multiply the percent by the amount, what it does is it extracts just the acid, and that's really all we care about here is how much acid you would have at the end. And so what else did we have? We had 50% acid. 50% is 50 over 100 times y. That's the amount of acid in y gallons at 50%. And what we want are 9 gallons at 30%. So we take 30%, which is 30 over 100, and multiply it by 9. And now we have a system of equations. It's unfortunate it happens to have fractions, but we can fix that. How do we fix it? The way we fix it is we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by 100. Right? When we multiply 20 over 100 times 100, the hundreds cancel. When we multiply 50 over 100 by 100, the hundreds cancel. And when we multiply 30 over 100 by 100, the hundreds cancel. 
and the bottom equation becomes 20x plus 50y equals, all that's left is 30 times 9, so that's 270. Rewriting, we have 20x plus 50y equals 270. We also have x plus y equals 9. And so I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 20, so my x's cancel. And so the bottom equation becomes negative 20x minus 20y equals negative 180. We have 20x plus 50y equals 270. When we combine these, we get 30y equals 90. Dividing both sides by 30, we get that y equals 3. That wasn't so hard. Looking back, the top equation here, x plus y equals 9, gives us exactly the answer we want um, to solve for the other, the other variable. We know that y equals 3, and so if we have x plus y equals 9 and y equals 3, we get x plus 3 is 9, and so x is 6. Now, the correct steps in solving any of the word problems that you're given is to, one, don't freak out. Two, try to come up with some variables to represent the things you're solving for. And then come up with at least two equations that are going to represent uh, the relationships between those variables. Once, you've ha once you have two equations and two variables, you can solve by doing a, either elimination or substitution or even graphing. Um, any of the techniques that we've learned so far this, this uh, chapter. So go ahead, do the homework that I'm posting, and I'll see you in class.